Welcome back to this special episode of New Day. We are talking about the epidemic of youth suicide. When it comes to this difficult topic, there are many myths and misconceptions out there to help us through them. Please welcome Frederick Madison, a counselor specializing in suicide and suicidal ideology. Tell us what that means. It basically means to help people understand uh, the context of their situation, the big picture, so they can understand that and then they can work on it when they can see what it is. So part of it is not only talking about suicide, but the thinking that people and actually do that leads them there. seeing things, seeing maps and visuals and models, and I'll show this in a second, so they can actually see what they're in. Okay, let's talk about some of the myths, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Asking somebody about suicide will cause them to think about suicide. No, and it was, as was said earlier, we need to talk directly to that, um, and it's, it's like a pressure cooker. If you can address it directly, it deflates some of that power that it has. Uh, so definitely talk directly to the person and ask them. Ask them directly. directly. Young children ages five through 12, let's say, cannot be suicidal. Uh, again, wrong. And Dave Jones recently uh, talked about how many, a uh, number of children uh, who are five to 12 um, are suicidal and every year 30 to 35 kids in that age group kill themselves. That and they astounding. use those words, they use those words, I want to kill myself. And there's more to say about that later. But So if a child is saying these kinds of things, don't think they don't know what they're talking about. No, they know exactly. Get them help. Exactly. Um, suicides always happen in an impulsive moment. Uh, really, is that true? Uh, this whole thing is like an, uh, again, a pressure cooker. Something is building up, and at some point, things just snap. So the snapping happens automatically, but there's a buildup to the pressure. And is there an opportunity to intervene during yes. that building yes, up? Okay, yes, that's yes. good. Truth number one, there's a language of suicide, a language that suicidal people speak. What does that mean? Yeah, I worked with 16,000 people who were suicidal, and they I'm a poet also, a poet, and so a linguist. I study etymology, and I listen to their language. I listen to two languages. I listen to what they're saying and what they're not saying, mm -hmm. and then I find information in between the two realities. And and then Can feed you give us a clue? Yeah, uh, uh, one example is uh, one woman, when she finally understood what I was saying, she said, are you saying to me that when I say I want to die, it's a metaphor for I want to live? I said, yeah, it's a metaphor for I want to live. None of these people wanted to die. They wanted to live. They wanted to be themselves. They wanted to be who they were here to be in this earth, on this earth, in this life. But they were in such pain. They're, they were inside this place. They couldn't, they couldn't locate this. There was no reference point. That was said earlier. There's no reference point. They couldn't see what they were in. They're in something. What is this? This is, the, this is, this is um, the predominant model that I use that clients gravitate to. Um, this model called the person in the box or the invisible cube this cube is invisible, so people can see in and see the child or the person. The person inside it, though, can't see it, just as you can't see your eyes as you look at me. They can't see what's, what's holding them. Right. And both sides are lost in the equation because there's an equation here, and nobody can understand the experience of what's happening because both sides are split out in their own reference points. Into their own worlds, yes, almost, exactly. not just the and, language, and there's but no into the world. no talking in the middle in that sense, yes. So this, this model here, uh, they all speak to that. We can't get through that, and they can't come out. Unless we do what? Unless we understand what they're in and speak to them in the language that they are using, helping them understand their own terms. They'll use metaphors. I'm trapped, stuck, and lost. But they, if you ask them, where are you lost? Like a child, they say, I don't know where I'm I lost. Don't know. What's the trap? I don't know. And then I'll say, who are you? And say, I don't know. Well, who are you killing? I don't know. And who's killing you? Because suicide, the word means to murder the self. Suicidari. Homicide, insecticide, it means to slay the self, but the self doesn't know who the self is, and there it's like being buried in an avalanche. They can't, they can't, they can't identify, they can't identify what's going on. Exactly. Suicide is a symptom of an underlying problem, you say, but not always depression. We had many people at the hospital that were uh, very suicidal but never depressed. I've had many friends very depressed but never suicidal. Okay, now why is that? How can you be suicidal without being depressed? Um, the, the, it, because of this bifurcated state that they're in, they're in right. this, this split state, and uh, it, it looks from the outside, it looks like you're just seeing them in that state, but you don't see what's this environment that is surrounding them. Mm -hmm. You cannot see what is going on within them. And not that they don't have depression; they might have depression, but some, many people, don't have it's, have depression. Yeah, it is. It is such a fascinating thing because it for anybody who wants to live yeah. and wants to take care of their kids, whatever, the, the idea that you'd be in so much pain that that 
seems like the wise choice is yeah. just to not live anymore right. is very difficult. But it sounds like what you're telling us is that there really are some some approaches, some languages, some ways this has that we have to learn about yes, yes, and get better yes, at, yes, at figuring yes, exactly. out. Yeah, we when someone is suicidal, we often hear what they say, but not how they're saying it. Right. It's a real difference, big difference, missed by an inch, missed by a mile, a real difference between what they say and how they say it. There's so much more to learn. We're going to yeah, post yeah, some yeah, resources, yeah, yeah. but thank you yeah, so that, much yeah, for opening, yeah, um, opening that part of the conversation. Up next, tips on how to talk to your own teenagers realistically about suicide. We'll be right back.